Thank you for joining me. This is Katie Whitledge with the Beyond the Technique podcast. Welcome back every day. We are all here again. If you did not hear the conversation in episode 346, I brought the women of beauty industry technology together for an amazing conversation so you could learn about who they are, why they created the platforms they did, and, and what it means for salon owners. And we're back again to talk about the future of beauty technology and why it's critical for the future of salon business. So salon owners, today's conversation is absolutely for you. If you are new to joining us at Beyond the Technique, what are we all about? Well, this is an education platform. We are changing the way salon owners are supported in their business. So who do we have here today? Well, we have Alicia Soulier back. She is the CEO and founder of Salon Scale on its way to global and over 3,000 users. Such a huge brand in such a short amount of time. So progressive. You'd be very proud to be a user of Salon Scale yourself. So if you're not, I have the link in our show notes for you to check out. And the other amazing guest we have is Sarah Cooper is back here today. She is the CEO and founder of Aura Salon Wear. And if you havenven't heard of it, it's time you did because Aura's super progressive in changing the way you understand your reports. They actually produce reports that summarize what it all means so you don't have to siphon through and analyze data. And then you can quickly make the right to business decisions that you need to make. And that's just one of the unique differentiating factors of Aura Salon Software. And I'm here with you as your beloved host, but also the CEO and founder of Meet Your Stylist, the secret for your salon marketing and getting and keeping salon guests. So we're going to dive in today. Welcome, ladies. Thank you for joining me again. Thanks for having me and Sarah. <laughs> yes, thank you so much, Katie. Okay, I want to ask, of course, we're still in this midst of an unprecedented time in our life and our history. But regardless of where we are now, I want this talk. It's all about the future of beauty technology. So I'll start with Alicia. Where are we now in beauty technology? And are we where we should be as compared to other billion dollar industries? Well, thank you for the great question. Um, I, unfortunately, we are lacking in the technology sector in the salon industry. And um, I kind of just wrote this quote down, which I think the whole industry needs to hear this, is I think the entire industry needs to do a trust fall into technology. <laughs> We're going to catch you. <laughs> just, just fall back and let us help you out with the rest. Um, I think the one thing that's really hard, and I found this too as a former salon owner, was that we didn't have enough time to invest in the learning of the knowledge around technology to really put into those and invest into our businesses to really trust that it's going to be smarter than I am to run portions of my company. Um, and I'm here to tell you that, yes, it, it actually exists. There's a lot of technologies that will produce information a lot faster. And you have to look at the ROI, the return of, on investment. You have to look at what is your time worth. And if you can invest in that technology that will give you the information 10 times faster and more efficient, then it makes more sense to do what you love, which is doing hair and uh, taking care of your customers or growing your actual infrastructure, your business, and let the technology run the rest. Um, so I do think we are a little bit behind, um, but we're, we're crawling up quite quickly here over the last little bit. Uh, but just like I said, just do a massive trust fall into technology and we're all going to be fine here when we get through this. This may be kind of a painful question. I want to follow up with you, Alicia, on this, but is it may be painful to say, is this for lack of education? Is it because our industry is built up primarily of art artists who start a craft and then they become business owners versus many others who, you know, go the traditional route and get, you know, bachelor's degree, then master's degree, then, and I know Canada is a little different, but, it, you know, that may be kind of crappy to bring up, but is this an issue? Do we need... Um, to provide different education or processes in how we go about people onboarding people into this industry. I mean, what are your thoughts? Why are we as an industry behind the curve? Uh, yeah, again, another good question. I think the biggest thing is when you look at traditional business in the salon sector, 
Um, they usually start, you start with uh, from school to working behind a chair in a commission based type of salon. Uh, you're there for between a year and three years. And then you go and either rent a chair yourself or you, you go and start your own business. Uh, and then you are in that business for three to five years. And then it basically has an 80% failure rate. So either, you know, 80% of them fail and the 20% that succeed, they're not investing back in those early stages. So we're not creating a circle. We're not creating a loop. We're creating this like long dragged out, um, line that doesn't have a lift. So when we look at traditional investment and we look at other companies and we look at the reason why other economics work in other industries, it's because we're all looking for that up to the right. We're looking for a nice hockey stick, a nice return on investment. And that's the education that needs to be put into the salon industry. We have to understand the why behind we're doing things on the financial and the business literacy. And so I think, you know, at the end of the day, we can teach those salons that have been operating for five years to really dig deep. Now it's getting uncomfortable. Let's think about location two, or let's think about how do we take our senior talent and teach them to invest back into my business so that we can go even bigger or get to the next steps. So I really think you are correct that we need education on the financial and business to really dig into understanding those metrics. But most importantly, we all have to have a wake up call to understand as an industry that we can't just grow grow companies and then jump off the cliff because that is just not, this is not going to help anymore. And it's time for us to unite. It's time for the brands, the manufacturers, the industry, the entire industry in the salon world um, has to put attention on this because people are capitalizing on your failures and this is not okay. And so it's really important right now to really dig in to what business is and how do we all get those nice uh, returns and those good margins so that we can invest back properly and create a nice circle effect and not this line and drop off. I love that you give us those visuals because it makes sense. And I just appreciate your perspective. I want to bring up to Sarah. And by the way, for everybody listening, if you didn't catch episode 346, go back, learn about the journeys. It's very inspiring. But one of the things I want you to know is each one of us have been or are salon owners and found that we needed a technology solution to one of our problems and it wasn't available. So we created it ourselves. And so Sarah, when, it, when you think about what does the future of beauty technology look like? What do you see? What's the 10 years from now look like when it comes to technology in our industry? Sure. I mean, it's hard for me to really say right now what I think 10 years would look like, but, but for, to go back for just a second to, um, to expand even on what Alicia was just saying, I mean, having that trust fall into technology, I, I, I think that for sure, because everything is going to be so different, salon owners, that are utilizing this time, I just, I cannot express how important it is because that's the one thing that a salon owner doesn't have. They don't have any time. A, a stylist doesn't have any time. They, it's hard for them to invest in their future, which is what needs to happen for them to kind of break the cycle that a lot of them have been in so that we can propel ourselves to be, you know, like other multi-billion dollar industries. We, we have power within us, but we do need to make make and take the appropriate steps to make that change. Utilizing this time so they can come out ahead is, is going to actually be a momentous part of this cycle that's needed to happen already. But, but we're actually, you know, if we could use, you know, a crisis to turn into a positive for, for the future of the industry, now is the time. There's no better time than right now. And I, I actually find that to be really invigorating and motivating myself. Um, to, to really think about, okay, this, this can be powerful. And just like any of our journeys, even just the three of us, all of our, our journeys to get to be, you know, where we are that, you know, the CEOs of these technology companies and, and having the, the bandwidth and the reach and the, you know, everything that we've worked so hard, it, it doesn't happen because it just, it just happens. So, so salon owners coming together and uniting with brands, with suppliers, with everyone, to start to begin to make this change for the future. There's technology that I've built, that Alicia's built, that you've built, that actually do things to automate, to automation is freedom. Uh, some other educators that I'm working with in LA, uh, uh, Beyond Beauty School, that's their, their tagline. And it's, it's so true. Education is, is freedom. I'm sorry, not education. Automation is, is freedom. And that's where, you know, when you look at how consumer trends are going to be changing, you know, Unfortunately, I think that something that's going to be happening as we come out of, 
out of this crisis is that, you know, the, the demand for personal services or designer brands is going to be different than, than it was, uh, you know, before everything. And so that's where we start having to realize, okay, how do we start, how do we start, you know, we need to look at our finances. We need to do our numbers. How do we start saving every single penny? How do we start maximizing all profit? How do we start increasing revenue without using our two hands? Because that's what we've been doing for so long. It's almost like we've made our jobs in, in a salon harder. Um, but in, if, if this can be embraced right now, I think it could be spectacular for how we run our futures and, and going back into salons. When we're looking 10 years out, going back into salons and being able to have a life, um, being able to have quick access to numbers, being able to coach you know, with our, our staff on where they should be, why they're not there. And hey, let's, let's look at it here, here, and here where it doesn't take you know, endless amounts of time. time. Time is the new commodity. And it's, it's funny that right now time is also what is you know, driving us the most crazy. We all have a lot of time right now. Um, but when you think about the future of that time, time is what time, time is, is everything right now. And time is where we're going to, we're going to make our money. If you're a salon owner right now and you have the time what are the top two questions you should be asking yourself about the future of your salon business. I'm sorry, Katie, my, my thing cut, my mic cut out. Could you say that again? Yeah. So you're a salon owner right now. Imagine, right? You, right now you have the time. What are the top two questions you should be asking yourself to prepare for the future of your business? Uh, number one, how can I create consumer confidence within my guests and my staff um, upon reopening? That's number one. Um, the, the consumer, creating quick consumer confidence is going to lead to faster profitability. Uh, and that's, that's in any day, but, but today especially. And number two is how can, I, how can I retain every single penny of what I'm bringing in? How can I get my, my operations down to a science so that every dollar coming in, number one, I already know best practices on how to max out my clientele, um, but any dollar that comes in, how can I, how can I, I, I guess I guess I'm through automation is how can I automate as much as possible so that I can hold on to every single dollar that I'm bringing in? How, you know, not necessarily reducing staff, but if that's a possibility, and people are going to be going back with with tighter um, purse strings. That's an old thing, but with you know they're going to be very very tight because they have to be. Um, but I think that people are going to look at everything a lot differently. But looking at creating consumer confidence for faster profitability and um, retaining every single dollar that you bring in. I'm going to jump in on this question too, as part groupie on this conversation. <laughs> um, I had an amazing talk yesterday with Candy Shaw. Many know her as the Bali Lama. Uh, she invented clay lightener. I mean, she pioneered it never existed before her. So she's unbelievable. And she runs a salon and an academy. And one of the things she brought up in thinking about the future of our business. And I, I love that you brought up automate. It's how can we minimize some of those um, tasks within the salon, like check in, check out all these things that take up time or so how many bodies are in the salon at one time when that time, if you reduce, reduce time, it takes, you could increase frequency or number of visits. So that's one thing I, I thought was interesting that she brought up. And then what I'm thinking is what can I go buy right now and expand on? Because any good investment or, or market, right, is you buy when, when it's down, you sell when it's high, right? So you think about if you are in a position as a salon owner where you've been fiscally not only responsible, but you've just built up such um, profit storage, if you have a storage account of funds, if you have cash right now, as much as it's like, oh, I want to conserve, maybe take advantage of some of the funding opportunities you have right now at the lowest interest rates ever, or even the forgiveness capabilities, and maybe you can double up. Maybe you can multiply and divide. And so there are going to be a couple things happening. There are going to be, unfortunately, salons that are not going to be able to weather the storm. Is there an opportunity to acquire their company and streamline what they have going on and step into their cash flow and their 
Yeah, that would be huge. The other is, are, are there going to be more available retail spaces at a lower cost? Are you going to be able to renegotiate your lease? Or are you going to be able to maybe start up a second, third, or whatever location? Um, because the, I guess the market and what Candy also brought up is she believes, which I agree with, there's going to be a lot of people who want to come back into a team environment. Being an individual, maybe Ruth renter, booth renter is not going to be um, something they can do financially anymore. They need to get back into a team, and especially a team if you can provide benefits and, and all of those education resources and just that could be a big opportunity that you think about. But that's kind of the right now. You would have had to kind of prepare for that and learn what you need to know to go into it. So the point is, what can you do now to better weather any future storms, be in a position to buy and expand when maybe others can't because then you have the ability to do it. There's leverage there. Um, when I think about future, I think about not only where should we be by now, but where could we be? Where do we need to get to? And so I'm going to go back to Alicia on this. H how do we get there? We get there by working together. Everybody, all the networks that are available for technology owners, we support each other. We rally together so that there's more tech solutions in our industry. But then what do you think is the next step after we come together as a group of tech owners in this industry? How do we get to the next level so that we can support salon owners in a whole new way? Um, yeah, well, I think it's important to say uh, right now is like, what what is in it for us as technicians and technical companies? Like, what are we actually trying to get? And the answer is data. Uh, we want to study the data to provide streamlined solutions so that you can make manage and make more money as as a salon um, or a consumer. Um, and then with that data, we can streamline processes and help with environmental issues, automation issues, uh, and really learn how to see real-time data to see what is actually moving and what is not so that we're not overproducing or underproducing, um, whatever it is. The, the true little nugget that we are trying to do as every technical company is get data. Now, everyone is scared of data, and I want to just remind you that there's nothing to be afraid of. Data is actually built to help increase your time, your productivity, um, and your lifestyle. So, you know, that's what we really do create a lot of our, our data around. Now, um, when you talk about data, I kind of use it as this analogy. So if we think about a company called Netflix, okay? So Netflix has boomed, obviously, over this decade. And nowadays, people, you know, everybody has a Netflix account. How many people went to the movie theater, right? So more and more people are moving to an online streaming process than they are into a movie theater. So the reason, and then look at that. So every year when there was just movie theaters, like a Cineplex or whatever, they would only produce, you know, a certain amount of movies a year because it was very expensive to produce movies and you would only release, you know, good, let's say 20, 30 movies a year. If you look at Netflix, they're releasing 20, you know, a month, a new 20 new shows a month they can produce because they can produce them faster and the budgets are cut in half because they don't have to advertise and push them out the same way they did before. And people can watch it from their homes. So what we're finding here is this data that's been collected, they know what to make now. So there's no mystery. There's no failed productions. And the reason why is because when you watch a Netflix show and you stop, that's a data point. That means you were not interested and it came from this IP address of this other area. And so when they started to study this, they started to see what actually people want to watch. And then they made the shows, new shows released to them based off what consumers are actually watching and streaming. And that's why you're seeing more and more shows on Netflix and why Netflix is now capitalizing on the data. So this is exactly what is happening and what should happen with our industry. This is not a negative thing. It's a supply and demand issue. And it's a thing where if we can use this data to properly study what is actually happening in salons, we can increase the quality of life for the salon owner, increase our industry, increase the margins for all, and we can ultimately produ produce no failed products. No manufacturer, no distributor, no company wants to make a product that never sells. And if we can give access right away to know if it's going to work or not, would you not want that? Um, instead of having, you know, a case sitting on your shelf, never moving, you would want to know that information too. So that's why you really want to trust the data. And um, 
And ultimately, you know, the data is kind of like another analogy I always go to is like going to a doctor, you know, uh, it would be weird if you didn't have an electric, uh, electronic uh, medical record, right? So we do this so we can study to make sure we're healthy, right? And, and you would just never like, you would think it'd be weird if someone didn't record this stuff so that if you had a history of something, there's something there to make sure that you don't ever get infected, you get sick, you get this, you, get, you have a history to go back to. So it's important for us to create a history as well. That data is really important so we can study the great things and the bad things um, in our industry. So the only thing I can say right now is if you're listening to this, do not be afraid of data. Data is everywhere. And if you think, you know, that you're not getting tracked, you probably are in some way. But it is a lot of the times, majority of the times, data is created to enhance economy, in, enhance the world, in, in, uh, the environment. Um, it's usually enhanced to increase time, uh, I said productivity, and, and of course, ultimately, enhance your life. So don't be afraid of data. Dive in, and uh, we got you. That's that trust ball. <laughs> yeah, trust it. Just fall. <laughs> so we we kind of see you brought up, you know, products on the shelf. If we had data, we wouldn't be buying into, let's say, a new product launch within your brand and it doesn't perform well. And now you got trapped cash on the shelf or it could perform well, but your styles maybe aren't as bought into it. And you'd see that trend possibly over time. I know that we may take this in stages. So stage one, um, and I know, Sarah, that you really provide a solution for this is turning to e-commerce, um, do we eventually eliminate products on the shelves or what are your thoughts on the future of retail for salon businesses and how does technology play a role in that? So great question. So if you think about what's happening right now, you, you look at, you know, giant retailers out there, they, they can quickly make a shift from being service to having, to going with online, online retail sales. Um, that's something that our industry has lacked in, and that's something that, that I mentioned in our, in our last episode, I, I think, that we were building, uh, expediting the build of an e-commerce platform to be that solution for salons that lives within your already branded uh, client app. Uh, we are actually, we just launched it um, on the West Coast last Friday, and we are, we're taking it across the country about one week at a time in, in stages. Um, it's something, it's, it's going to be not, we're expediting it for, for stylists in the, in the right now with, with everything happens that, that's happening right now, but we're, but it is going to be a way of the future. And it, if you think about the decline in, in, uh, you know, brick and mortar retail sales anyway, um, I'll use my salon as an example, um, you know, eight, eight ish years ago, we were about 22, 24% retail to service, very high, very good, uh, closed out 2019 at about 16%. That's, that's hundreds of thousands of dollars that we're not selling, that someone else is selling, and we want that money back. Um, so now what Aura is doing is providing that solution for salon owners. Again, living right inside their client app, you, get, you, you don't have to do anything. Uh, we all know space, space along with time are issues inside any salon. So you don't have to have, you're not shipping anything, you're not handling returns, we handle all of that. So again, automating that process, providing an additional revenue stream, not only to make that money back that we're missing from before, but to, but to grow that as well. But it starts too with, with salon owners beginning to change that mindset, starting to think about ways you know, that are different than how they're used to operating. And again, if you can try to find a silver lining or, or a positive in, in uh, the crisis of now, because what, you know, what will be the next crisis? Um, is, uh, is utilizing this time and, and changing, changing your mindset to, to be forward thinking and to be progressive. So how can you, how can you, um, what doing, what am I trying to say? Doing your numbers. Um, sorry, my child is walking by and I just got immensely sidetracked. Uh, the benefit of working at home, but changing your mindset to be a forward thinker so that you can protect yourself in the future. Yeah. So I'm curious, and this should salon, speaking of money, because you said I want that money back when it comes to retail and kind of the loss you've seen over time. I think one of the pain points salon owners have every time a new tech tool comes out is there's another 100 to $200 to invest in. And instead of you know buying into one point of sale platform or one salon software solution, they're having to use a little, you know, a little bit for this and this and this. Now, 
one could argue that we're used to this in our personal lives. This is the way the world runs in, per in our lives every day. But there's this kind of thought in our head um, that anything over $200, if we're spending that on our business is like crazy. How do we encourage salon owners to embrace the opportunities of using multiple sources for their technology, or should we as a tech group provide a solution even for that? What are your thoughts on that, Alicia? Uh, yeah, so it's simple. You can just make a quick little spreadsheet, um, which is very easy. Just go to like numbers or Excel, and then you just put in technology and amount of money spent. And then you track the income that came in that month and then left. And then basically, if by adding that technology increased how much money you made, then you know you have a good investment. Um, so if you have a booking software, a POS system, uh, whatever, like you're buying, if that increased the amount of people coming in because it, it was updated or it was more streamlined or people knew how to you know, upsell, um, you're gonna see an increase in your revenue. Um, and then if you have, you know, a back bar solution like Salon Scale or like Vish or SureTint, these companies are all designed to help you make sure you maximize an area of your business you may never have thought of. So really, all you have to do is a simple return on investment calculator. So put in how much am I spending and did I increase and just keep watching that. And that's going to really help understand what this thing and what these technologies are going to really do for your business. Um, and ultimately, I can guarantee you, you're just going to see it all grow because that's, that's what that does. So invest in things that are growing your business right now. Don't invest in things that decline your business. So it's not about the decor. It's not about the awesome pillows, the throw pillows, the like extra little bells and whistles. Um, and if anything I could suggest about your retail, uh, uh, bundle retail, which means like create uh, more opportunities to sell them in a bundle. Here's our smooth set. Here's our curly set and sell three products instead of just one. And you can do that. That's the value of you as a salon because you have the value of understanding how products work and how they overlay and lap with each other. Whereas a consumer online doesn't know how to pick three products at once. They typically only know how to pick one shampoo and conditioner. Like they don't know what pairs with what and what works for their hair type, especially when you're cross branding, when you have multiple different brands so the way to capitalize this right now is upsell the shit out of product sorry for swearing um but basically bundle everything bundle 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 and try to hit, hit those retail goals of selling you know a 60 dollar per, per transaction goal or whatever it is try to sell them in in, in massive bulks and you'll see uh, products move a lot faster that way and you'll be able to you know really give yourself a big boost of cash flow which you're going to need when you start to open up your salon such great advice to look at the simple ROI. Yeah, great advice. And I'm pretty sure that all three of us could do an ROI calculator and probably have it on our website right now to show you, hey, here's your average ticket. One new guest spends 80 bucks. So if you get three new guests in the door, it pays for itself. If Hopefully you're getting th more than three new guests in, in your salon every month. But I like that. Yeah, and even, even with preventing more no-shows, right? Or having... Um, a process that prevents those last minute cancellations. So there's so many ways to look at that. And I think it was great for you to bring it up. So my next question that I want us to dive into are, it's kind of two parts. What do salon owners have to embrace in order to be progressive and sustainable in the future salon model? Because there are salon owners out there who are like, are you kidding me? Um, I started doing hair when Vidal Sassoon was teaching and I've gone through so many changes. I'll always adapt, but at some point it, it's maybe hard to keep up or we lose a little steam and energy. And then we have the younger generation of owners who are like, look, if you're not going to provide this then I'm going to go start my own salon and do these things and provide it. So how do we encourage salons to embrace technology, what should they embrace about it? And number two, and this is funny to think about because, you know, the quote, success is what you say no to. What are they going to have to give up? So what, is, what do salon owners need to embrace right now when it comes to beauty technology? What are they going to need to give up? I think that, uh, I think that something that they're going to have to embrace is, you know, if you think about the, the mindset of a hairstylist or a salon owner, 
and especially a salon owner that's also behind the chair, they, every hour for them is subjective. You know what I mean? And it's, it's a lot of pressure for them. And I truly understand that. Um, they, they, you know, they find, they find a way to do, you know, a certain technique that starts making money. And suddenly, you know, that's, that's their, their technique that they're doing. Um, and that's the technique that they're teaching their staff as well. Allowing themselves to think about something a little bit differently than they've been thinking of it is the first thing that they need to allow. And, and then to also answer your question on what they need to give up, they need to give up that the way that they've been doing things is the only way, because I think that expanding their mindset is going to be freeing. And I'm actually going to give you an example. And this is just, um, this is just a, a one little tiny example, but they probably haven't put uh, the time into doing some, some simple math for it. Uh, but all what you said about Candy Shaw um, made me think, uh, and I literally just sat here and, and wrote this down. If you're looking at, she wants to automate checking in and checking out. Okay, that's gonna be a thing of the future. Contactless payments, huge buzzword right now. I'm not gonna not hear that for a long time. Um, but let's say that let's say that by automating the check-in process, you save one minute. Okay, that doesn't sound like a lot of time. Let's say one minute, and let's say that one stylist is doing eight clients per day. That's gonna be 40 minutes per day. Uh, I'm sorry, 40 minutes per, in a five-day week that that stylist is going to be saving or that salon is going to be saving just from that one client, from saving one minute at check-in. Now, if you take that and you take a checkout process, which is a little bit longer, we, we say it's about three to seven minutes. So it's, we'll go with the average of five minutes. So that same stylist is seeing uh, eight clients per day. We're going to start saving five minutes per checkout. You're looking at per week. 3.3 .3 hours per week. So you combine those two together, you're almost at four hours per week. And then if you take that on a monthly basis, you're looking at 16 hours per month of potential time savings. So what can you do with that? You can, you can get more clients in, you can run your business better, you can focus on your marketing more, you can have maybe a little bit more freedom in your life. So when you start thinking about when you start expanding, you know, the way that you were doing things to maybe, you know, a better way that people have put people, you know, like us that have, have been uh, working in salons and have recognized what some of these problems are. And we went out and built a solution for it because we know that it existed. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a fascinating process that, that is exhilarating to think about what that can, how that can actually transform your business. So good. Alicia, did you want to add to that? Oh, always. You know me. <laughs> um, okay. Number one, uh, you as a salon owner need to invest in mental health. So uh, you're going to need to either if, if it's a meditation app or whatnot, you're going to need to do this because when it comes back, things are going to get a little difficult because there's going to be restrictions, whether you can only, you know, service 20% of your clients at a time and the times are changing. Um, and if you're squeezing out times where stylists can work by, then th there's going to be an increase that those stylists are going to do home calls, right? So that revenue is not coming into your business. They're going to go to the people's houses and do their, their hair. So what I want is to, you know, encourage a mental, uh, awareness and you know create a system so that when those stylists are coming back you create a uh, mental awareness for them too you know whether you're investing in an app for them for you know um, for you know uh, let's say meditation or you know giving them resources in your local you know towns cities uh, states provinces um, just giving them resources of where they're going to need to go to really talk through this because this is going to be a big shift um, and then just be patient and give yourself grace because things are going to be a little bit um, you know, as we go through recovery, as we go through these things, things are going to be, uh, you know, not, um, not the way that we plan them to be. And so, um, maybe set up an opportunity for people to do house calls. And I know this sounds crazy, but like, if you can make sure that they can go and use the software to charge for the service or go to someone's house and that you're still being able to process it through your machines and just understand that that's the flexibility that's going to happen because maybe only half your staff can come back you know maybe only you can do a quarter of staff at a time so the other quarters could go to like one house at a time like if there is an opportunity to be creative right now this is how you're going to be creative so think about 
an opportunity to create a system like okay so when you go to the person's house you do this you have here's your sanitary here's your stations here's what you need before here's how you you when you take products from the salon you fill out this when you come back you enter them back in the system you know figure like out a solution right there because people are going to not be able to be in a large setting um potentially for a while. So creating that might, might be the difference of getting like that early stage kind of coming back. Um, and the last thing is really focus on reoccurring revenue. So as soon as that day comes up um, where you're open, I would suggest to do uh, either a subscription based or a reoccurring model, meaning take your top, you know, top 20 clients and say, hey, we're only giving out this for the top, the first 20 that t do this. It's five grand for the year, unlimited services, but it's $5,000 up front for the rest of the year. Um, you know, then you just get yourself a boost of investment right there. You've got some capital injection back in the business. Uh, you want to make sure you're not just spending it on anything. Just keep that preserved in the tanks for, you know, your, your fixed rates, your fixed costs, whether they're your rent or whatnot. Um, but now you have the money that you know you have a runway. You have like a year of money to pay for your rent and pay for your bills, your fixed costs for the year. Now the rest, you just focus on those, those customers, the stylists and creating that life for them. So do whatever you can to just make sure that, um, yeah, you're financially prepared and get that out of the way. And then take care of your mental health because uh, I think we're all going to be hit with some uh, little mind games here over the next little while. Absolutely. Um, both of, of what you both brought up is, is so good. And I'll just add a little bit to it if I could here today. So fun doing this together. I love it. Um, I, I want you to consider salon owners listening, give up your just, it's in you. It's built in you to, to be all things to all people. There is no way in this scenario that there's going to be a, a win all around. We all win at the end of this. There are going to be some um, losses probably, and we don't know what that looks like yet. But I agree with Alicia on one thing. I think we are going to be able to reopen, but probably not at full capacity. And does that mean you are only allowing your you know, top performers to come back on the floor at the very beginning, for the ones that have the most demand? Uh, something to think about. Also, I think that it's time that we embrace, I put a new business model and I agree again here with, is there a way to provide glam squad services on site? Now, I think it needs to be thought of like, okay, I'm going to need different liability insurance coverage. Like you're going to have to go through the legal part of it, the liabilities insurance, um, probably the travel portion. Do you provide the transportation for that to happen? What are the potential hazards? How do you make sure that your team's stepping into a safe environment? I think of um, the owner of a salon, it's called Concierge, which is this app that people can book people to come on site for them. You know, we see this all the time in our own salon for bridal services. We can be on site for bridal hair and makeup services for the wedding day. And so is there a way to make that available for certain services? Um, and more of a VIP status thing. So you know the people you're going into their home and you know that it's going to be a clean, safe environment. But thinking about how to maximize your revenue production and profit margin right now when you may not be able to operate the way you want to. And without getting political here, I will say um, I'm not a fan of the government telling me what I can and can't do. I mean, that's not the freedom of of the American dream of being able to start and have this. So I know it's gonna be hard because we all chose a certain lease space. Why we're leasing a salon space that we're in right now based on how much money per square foot we're capable of earning in this amount of room. And if we're not gonna be able to do that, you gotta look at the whole thing in a whole new way. I love the idea of memberships or subscriptions. So that's huge. Um, and I think that, yeah, giving up being all things to all people and being the hero at the end of the day, that's going to be too hard for you to maintain when we go to reopen. And for those of you who are like, can I even afford to continue this? The answer is always if you want to, right? If there's a will, there's a way. And there are solutions out there, but you got to have that will in you. Uh, and, and just tell your team authentically and transparently what you're considering or going through right now. 
so that they understand some of the decisions you're going to have to make. And so anyway, I, I just think that in the, when it comes to the future of technology, we also are going to have to give up what Sarah said, the old ways of doing things, but what does the new way look like? And what to Sarah's point, this whole conversation is, that's exciting because it can be whatever you come up with. You can dream up anything right now and work on seeing it come to life. Gosh, this is a lot. I feel like there needs to be more conversation on educating salons just on financials and truly how to be profitable, how to make business decisions based on, is this going to help or hurt us? Is this going to help us get new clients and keep them? Is it going to help us get new team members and keep them? Um, yeah, I think all three of us are sitting here with massive passion to help you. The actual capabilities when, when it comes to technology solutions to help. So before we're done speaking today, were there any other topics around future of technology that you want us to dive into or that we didn't go over today that would be helpful for everybody listening? And by the way, if you're listening, I forgot to bring this up. You can go watch us. Our conversation today is available on YouTube. So if you go to Beyond the Techniques YouTube page, you can actually see the faces behind the names and watch our conversation there. But um, I'll start with with Sarah on this. Is there anything else you want to make sure that people really uh, think about when it comes to technology in our industry? Um, as far as technology goes, I think that, uh, you know, designing who you want to be on the other side of anything, whether it's you're starting a new job, whether it's you're coming out of a pandemic, what, whatever it is, you have an opportunity right now to design who you want to be when you come out of this and you start putting the pieces together by doing, you know, investing time in it yourself, doing the research, putting the work in, uh, and you get to come out of it, like I said, whoever, whoever you want to be. And then on the, on the flip side of that, also remembering that if you are a salon owner uh, facing needing to close your doors, like the one thing to remember with that is they, they can't, no one can take away your talent. You, you will emerge from this in one way on top and you'll make the, the best business, best business decision for yourself um but you know remembering those two things you have the power you have the power for for any of that and to accomplish any of that and technology if you're open to it can be a huge uh road to freedom and and profitability uh re and retained uh income as well and all of that yeah alicia what are your final thoughts here today well first of all i have to say this was an amazing conversation you know and i think you girls are insanely incredible and i'm just so lucky to be you know on a call with you guys and then also just in this whole industry together fighting the good fight together um i'm gonna say uh it's you know not necessarily just for technology but transparency is the newest currency to build trust so I, you know, have said this for the last couple of years is kind of what Salon Scale kind of has been built around is transparency is the newest currency to build trust. Now, when your staff comes back and when your customers come back and all that stuff, trust is going to be affected um, when a pandemic or an issue like this comes in. It's, it's a form of also an, an abandonment in a way too, right? Because some of the stylists that come back are going to feel like these fear and trust and insecurities and uncertainness, right? And your customers coming back, a uh, same thing. They're going to feel, you know, unsure. Like, is it safe here? Is it like, they're going to feel a little bit like that. So the trust is going to be the biggest thing that uh, you need to build in your brand and in your business and um, with your customers, your clientele, as well as your staff. So be transparent. Uh, be transparent with technology. Be transparent with your emotions. Be transparent with everything. Um, at the end of the day, the more transparent you are, you will build that trust that will build the system back up together and, um, and you will come out on this on top. Are you all in... Fired? Good Lord. We right. want you to rally around us. Look, it's hard to run a technology startup company. And it's, even though it's a billion dollar company, it's a challenge. You know, this is not easy. And so we want your support as well, please. 
um, any words of encouragement to just rally around us and we'll do the same for you. We'll always be there to encourage you as well. So I just appreciate all of you who join us here every single week. Beyond the Technique has the most loyal listenership. I love it. And I love meeting you. So when the time comes, when we can actually be at events again in the future, uh, please come up and talk with me, introduce yourself, um, and even connect with us, all of us, you know, through Instagram. And again, all the links to get connected to each of us and our, and our brands and just diving further into Beyond the Technique resources are all in our show notes today. So thank you, everybody. And as always, have an awesome day and stay strong. Thank you, ladies, for being here. Thank you. Thank you, Katie, so much.